This is the Agency Balance Podcast, where we talk about agency life, client relationships, and your own personal balance. Agency Balance is sponsored by Smartacre. Smartacre helps you automate, enhance, and accelerate your B2B marketing. Visit GetSmartacre.com to get your free marketing and sales assessment. Here are your co-hosts of the Agency Balance Podcast, David Snyder. And I'm Lisa Zwickel. Welcome to the Agency Balance Podcast. I am super excited to bring you today's guest, Jeff Atkinson from Freedom Digital Media. Jeff, welcome to the podcast. Well, thank you for having me, Dave. It's, a, it's an honor to be here and uh, look forward to sharing the next hour with you. That's so good. I'm, I, I'm, I'm excited to dig it because Jeff's background is amazing. And 24 years of experience in broadcasting, commercial, television production, most likely You've seen some of his stuff and you haven't even realized you've seen it. He's the founder of Freedom Digital Media, and he's the resident director of photography for, for the NFL's Baltimore Ravens. So how cool is that? We're going to dig into those. Maybe we can splice in some samples here, or I could put some links to Jeff's work out there, or maybe you just turn into you know CBS on a Sunday afternoon. But before we get into that, I, I, I'm hitting you with a hard question right off the bat. When it comes to digital media and photography and videography, over these last six months or even a year, what has been the biggest change or the biggest thing that's surprised you that, that hasn't been there for a while? Yeah, well, I, I think the biggest thing that's, that's approaching my, my field is AI. Um, everyone seems to be really worried about it and quite honestly scared to death of it. Um, I'm not sure where all that's coming from. Um, I'm not an expert on it myself, um, but I do think it's something that we need to be aware of. I think we need to start digging in and figuring out you know, how it's going to affect us all. Um, but I'm also not too concerned about it. I mean, you know, change in our business is constant. And um, I just think we need to stay on top of it and figure it out and, and incorporate it and, and move on. I, I think the live element's always going to be there especially in what I do. Um, and uh, I don't think that's going to go away. I think mean, people want to see real people out there saying real things. and uh, But I'm definitely looking into it. There's no doubt about it. That's super cool. I mean, if you go back to, to maybe your, the start of your career, and that's maybe how you can talk about you know, how you got started. But I mean, at some point, they introduced CGI and and you know special effects into, into our media, right? And I, I think when I think about AI or I think about anything with the evolution of change and look at it as an advantage, right? Like how can you apply that to make what you're doing better? It's not necessarily, maybe it is replacing some of the things, but that's okay. So if it, if it frees you up to do things faster or more efficiently, I was playing around this, this, this silly app that it came up in my feed, right? It, it was a video thing where it was like, produce a video and you could tell it to do anything like a snowman cooking hot dogs. And it generated that image in an animated for me in real time because it's using AI. How cool is that? Like, did that st like, how did that how, like talk about like how you got started, right? Like did something like this exist or how did you, how did you innovate when you got started? <laughs> Well, I go back a little longer than that. I mean, I, I was shooting film when I first started. So so the big change for me when I started was the transition to one inch videotape. And then and then then what really shocked everybody was Betacam and how portable and easy that was to use. And th those were big ones, but those are more like logistical things. I mean, technology wise, you know, lighting is still lighting. Camera composition is still camera composition. A good interview and how to talk to people and relate to people and pull that out of people like that hasn't changed, you know, since I've started, you know, um, uh, the technology stuff, obviously it is changing and it's changing. It seems to go going faster and faster. Um, but you know, the basic people interaction and storytelling skills, um, I mean, it has changed, but it, it, that, that'll always be the same, you know, um, AI is crazy. I, I don't know enough about it myself, to be honest with you. Some of the things I've seen are, are, eye-opening i mean that app I, I haven't heard about that um but we've used it a little bit already you know replacing some, some voice stuff you know we didn't get a word or or a phrase or they misrepresented a, a statistic in like a corporate uh you know uh, uh you know uh 
uh, you know, reports, whatever, um, we, we have been able to get permission to not bring the guy back on and, you know, and make it work. Um, so it's a tool, put it in your toolbox, learn what it is. And, uh, you know, just got to stay on top of it. Not, you know, never gets any easier. <laughs> you know, you always got to stay on top of it. Yeah, just think about that. A great example there, like you're using AI to fill in the blanks or a miss word. I mean, when you got started back in the day, you had to call that person back and then you got to bill the client for another half day or whatever your minimum was, right? And it just incurred costs where now it's like, you know, he said, he forgot to say, he was saying to he instead of though, I'm making it up, right? But like, you can do that. And how cool is that, right? And I, I think that's that's what we're saying. I mean, what I'm saying with AI, my positioning is right. Like embrace it. It's here. It's it's not going away. Figure out how to use it, how to free up more of your time to be more efficient um, and, and stay in your lane. Like if it's out of your comfort zone, just figure out how it, how you can apply it, whether if it's script writing or filling in the blank, like you said. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Yeah. We're, yeah. We're a small, we're a small team here. And, but we've got one of the guys, John Furman. I mean, he's looking at it on a daily basis and he says it's incredible. And uh, so I've been asking him to feed me some links and stuff like that. So I can start, you know, looking at it intelligently and speaking about it intelligently. Um, I, I know for, still photographers are scared to death of it. I mean, and yeah. I, I think that might be legit, <laughs> you know, um, but they've managed to survive also, I, you know, over the years. I mean, just look at sports photography, you know, now there's like a thousand guys on a Sunday wanting to shoot a football game, you know, where it used to be, you know, only a couple people. So that, the competition and, and, and the technology, it, it just, it's, always going to just keep changing. You just got to stay ahead of it and, and figure out how it works for you. Right. Right. And obviously I can imagine the, the, like what you're shooting, whether if it's still or video, whether if it's, you know, landscape or if it's a person or if it's, uh, sitting there talking, a talking head, or it's, it's Lamar Jackson diving into the end zone, right? Those are, those are a whole bunch of different things and you know, where they, where you can apply those. So, how did that like over your career how did you get into like did you did you always like be diverse in what you were shooting or did you like start like how did you get started yeah so i, I wanted to be a sports announcer uh, coming into college that's really what i wanted to do my family's you know we're from south jersey it's a big you know sports town in philadelphia um all the teams are there represented so i wanted to go that way and uh, i realized real quick uh that i didn't have that skill there were some kids already in college that were just you know phenomenal on the you know on a radio on the radio or whatever so uh, i always had a natural knack for uh, I, I always took stills always took pictures um and uh, my senior year in college i got hooked up with this production company spicer productions and the dp there was a little was a little tired and just, you know, needed some new fresh things. So he, he we hit it off immediately and he basically let me do everything I could, you know, we were, again, we were a small shop. So he would let me shoot with him just watching the monitor. So that gave him, you know, a break. I, you know, I, I learned lighting immediately. I would take the one inch tapes into the, into the edit suite. They would let me sit through the edits. I would, uh, you know, I, I would maybe ride the faders and make some sound. Back then graphics were putting, you know, physical elements under a camera and shooting them and we would you know manipulate them under the camera so you learn like all this stuff like in a really concentrated time and i was there three days a week four days a week and by the time i was my semester was over i was pretty much a part of the team and uh and again that was a big transition where where a lot of the ad agencies at time were you know they were all shooting film we were shooting film we had a 35 mm film package in-house which was like unheard of for a company that small um and that big transition was coming through and uh, they laid some people off. I got hired. Um, it's been, honestly, it's been great ever since. I just uh, been really lucky, man. Been really fortunate. Um, the sports thing came in a couple of years later. You know, the Ravens came to town from Cleveland and uh, one of my friends was editing, who I used to work with at you know, my first company at Spicer uh, and at Big Shot, uh, Big Shot Productions. And they had interviewed like 20 people. They're like, you got to go talk to Jeff. I think Jeff might be willing to make a jump about on his own. So I went in and interviewed with Larry Rosen and um, got really lucky. He you know, loved my reel. It's what they wanted to see. Uh, my first game, they asked me if I could wire Ray Lewis, uh, which I had never done. Uh, I reached out to someone from NL Films for it. I had to do it. Wired Ray Lewis. The Ravens sold a TV show for the rest of the season based on what I had done. Um, 
they asked me to build a studio for them in their in their stadium. Uh, they were getting into doing some live stuff. Um, I was on a going on vacation. The guys like, well, I was like, well, when do you need it? Can I get it to you when I get back? He's like, no, I need it. You know, while you're on vacation. So I rented internet back in the day, uh, 24 years ago, and uh, put together a package. They did it immediately. We started the show. There was nobody in the audience by the time we were done heading to the Super Bowl, which we eventually won. We had, you know, three, four thousand people in our in our stadium watching the show. We had a live band. It just it just everything just snowballed and uh, and we pulled it off. So I've been kind of, uh, you know, uh, really fortunate ever since. Uh, and they're a great organization. I've just kind of you know, I'm in. Yeah, I'm, I'm embedded. I did it. I pulled it off. And uh I've been there ever since. It's a great relationship. They're great. It's helped build, you know, freedom uh, a lot. Um, and uh, it's been good for everything all the way around. I'm still there. So it's crazy. Did you come in right when they won the Super Bowl? I did. I did. <laughs> so maybe that's, maybe, maybe you're a good luck charm too. <laughs> yeah, there's some of that too, you know? Uh, yeah, there's some of that too. So it just, it just worked out, man. And, and they, like I said, they, they gave us a, uh, they gave us a lot of uh, leeway to get things done and we pulled it off. Um, and that, I mean, that's the end of the day, you gotta be able to pull it off. And we figured it out and we did it. We worked hard. It was those first couple of years were brutal. I mean, it was sure. hard, you know, time commitment wise. Yeah, I can imagine too. I mean, like there's, there's so much that goes involved into shooting something like that. And, you know, it's, that's a, you're still telling a story. It's, it's obviously maybe a little unscripted. There's still something you, you're still a schedule you follow, but you're shooting the game, but you're shooting everything else in between. You're, I can imagine there's so much content that has to be created even in a game that the average person doesn't think about. And then how, how do you process that in a way where, it can be consumed quickly because I think that's the one thing with sports. It moves so fast. It's like, okay, yeah, that game was last Sunday. We're already moved on to the next thing. Like, so if you're capturing those moments or you're micing somebody up and, and Ray Lewis does something that's going to carry, like, how do you leverage that content? I can imagine that's different. So how does that, like, how does that integrate? I assume you're, you're working with a lot of different, not only, hardware but a lot of different crew members there like the logistics of all of that i couldn't imagine yeah and it's and it's grown a lot um so you know when i originally you know the first couple of years you know freedom a lot of my gear you know went out on the jobs and uh travel with the team and all the logistics of getting everything there and i was supplying crew all, you know, a lot of the cities um you know as they've built out their department you know that's it's gotten easier for me in that respect um but yeah there's a lot of moving parts uh Earlier, when we did the wiring pieces, you know, you know, we started with Brian Billick, and he was really gave us access. It was incredible. You know, I would walk around practice on a Thursday afternoon, and you know, I mean, literally walking around the guys as they're stretching and working out, and that's yeah, you that's know, when they're laughing and having a good time, and I could start talking to them, and you know, you mentioned you know, how do you you know tell a story? I, I could prod a piece a little bit one way or another, you know, if we knew who we were playing, what the, you know, who was coming into town, if there was any uh, history between things, I could get guys to talk about it. It, it kind of became like, you know, Jeff, do your thing, you know, like just, just do your thing, go talk to guys. Um, and I wasn't afraid to do it. I, I talked to coaches. I just, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm just a kind of a personal guy. It's just kind of who I am. And uh, it, that's how it evolved. I mean, even during the game, like, you know, once you get to know guys on that level, if they're on a sideline and you're sitting there shooting them and you're five, 10 feet away, you can say something at some point. You know, I don't do that as much now, but back in the day, can I can do it in the tunnel or with a coach beforehand or, you know, whatever, maybe get a little sound bite, maybe get a little sound bite out on the field during warm ups and stuff. But you can get some messages in there in addition to what, you know, what the game itself is, but it is expensive exploded as far as also you know is how much content uh we develop in a day it, it, it is staggering how big our crew is now and how it all integrates between all the different departments and uh it, it is it is so impressive and it, i'm learning stuff every year and we're trying new stuff every year we're using new technologies every year and everything's just getting it faster and faster and faster you know before and we're uploading shots while we're shooting them wirelessly in the stadium to a logging person in the stadium. 
you know, wow. or, or at home. It's crazy. Uh, films is doing it. NFL Films is doing it. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's incredible how much it's changed in that respect. Yeah, obviously, so we talked about innovation and AI, and who knows, maybe AI is going to work its way into how, you know, things work from data transfer and stuff like that, too. But yeah, I mean, I I remember the beta cam days. I remember transferring beta, making copies, like at my first agency to like VHS, because no one had beta play, not everybody had beta players, and then it was to CDs, and then it was the DVDs, and the Blu-rays, and now forget it, it's just wireless transfer. And I'm sure, you know, and even like at our agency last, I don't know, it was probably five years ago. We went to like mirrorless camera, like, to, you know, there's just so much evolution in the hardware space. Um, but so talk, you know, so you're trying to always capture the moment. You're, you, you, that's why you said like, there's a sideline of guys because they, they want to capture whatever it is. If it's a sports trading card or it's going to be on the New York post or whatever, right. They're shooting for so what happens when you capture a bad moment? Like we saw a few like <laughs> scary moments like in the NFL this year with injuries and stuff like that. Talk to me about like shooting something where you realize like, oh my God, I just captured a bad moment. Yeah. So, you know, so I work for, directly for the Baltimore Ravens. I'm not a news organization. We're not trying to. So everything I, I shoot, it gets post-processed later, you know. So and I'm really respectful. That I have a guy. I mean, I've had guys break legs right in front of me on the field, and wow. your legs are twisted. And you, you just, I don't shoot it. You know, I, I stop. Um, uh, I've had guys thrown out of games, wired. You know, during a game, and yeah, you know, I've had someone say, "Oh, follow the guy off the field." Like I'm not going to do that. Like they let me into their world to to trust them. I'm not going to put them in a bad light. You know. Um, so I just, I just don't do that. Um, but we're, but we're also the, the, the team. So, you know, you're just not expected to do it. I don't think, um, uh, that's, I don't know. I don't know if that answers your question. Or not. No, I mean, I just stay away from it. I mean, it, it happens. And again, sometimes it's, this game is so fast. I mean, it really, it's staggering, you know, how fast it is. I've had friends come down, whatever helpers or, you know, freelancers come down who've never done a game. And the, it's always the first thing I say is I can't believe how fast it is. You have to be your head on a swivel. Um, and there's things that happen in front of you, in front of your camera that you don't even know happen until you see it later. Um, and that's the truth. And we're shooting at 120 frames per second. And until you see it, you don't know it always happens. So, um, you know, the logging crew will see that and depend, you know, or if somebody says something that I shoot, I don't always hear it because I'm, you know, maybe I'm hustling to something else, I'm thinking about something else, whatever. Um, but we are very um, respectful of our guys and uh, that's just kind of the way we handle our business. Amazing stuff. And obviously you're doing something right. If you're, if you're listening to this podcast right now, hop over to the YouTube channel because over Jeff's right shoulder is some serious gold hardware. So you, you, you've, you've been, you've been blessed to have some, some sizable trophies there. I mean, uh, Emmys. <laughs> yeah. I've won, uh, I've won about, uh, I think nine or 10 local Emmys, regional Emmys. And we want to, a couple of us were honored to be part of a national Emmy last year that uh, the NFL network did for this Mo Gabba piece we did on a young, young boy in Baltimore who uh, passed of various cancers and a story we did about him. So uh, I produced and helped, uh, you know, coordinate all that here locally. So pretty lucky, but yeah, wow. Ravens pick them up like it's uh, like they're trading cards. I mean, that's how good they are. I think a lot of teams look to us to see what we put out um, and they're trying to keep up and, and we do the same thing. Don't get me wrong. We're, we're doing the same thing. We're always trying to push the envelope. Eddie Coughlin and uh, Jay O'Brien uh, are just, they're just amazing. And uh, it's fun to watch. It's fun to be a part of. It keeps my pulse going. I, I love it. I mean, every day it's, it's, it's good stuff. That's, that is neat. So I understand other than keeping your pulse running, you're, you're, you're doing, what do you do to stay fit? You, you, you do some things to stay fit, I understand, because I think you're moving around a little bit. I, and, and it's funny because I, I've been I've been blessed to be on some some films and, we, you know, we've done some shoots and no one. Re everyone's like, oh, it's so cool. You're doing you're doing video. That's so neat that you get to do it. And I'm like, you know how hard it is, you know, work in the day of a life of a grip or something for 14 hours lugging stuff around. And then you'll see how, how cool it is. Right. How do you stay fit? 
Yeah, it's it's like a small army. I always say that all the time. Logistics of moving a small army around and all the equipment that comes with it. You know, I I, I try to just be um, consistent and I just try to vary it up. You know, I'm a I'm a wannabe triathlete. I've done a couple Ironman, half Ironmans, but I literally I swim, I I lift, I ride my bike. I'm a mountain biker. I'm a road rider. You know, I. Uh, I just try to lift it up. Yeah. Do everything. I run. Um, and I try to do something every day. I don't eat, I don't eat great. Um, so that's kind of my, my fallback, but I, I do, uh, I do try to work out all the time. You have to be fit on a, on a sideline, even, you know, working at freedom. I mean, we, you know, we take out a small, uh, you know, a small artillery every day of what we do. We try to bring out everything we can to be anticipate anything we, that we aren't aware of. And uh, I've had, again, I've had friends out with us or, and they're like, this is crazy how much stuff you do. Like my kids didn't want to be in the business, you know, and they were like, you work too hard, <laughs> you know? And, I, and I'm one of those guys who prides myself at the end of the day, you know, I'm almost 60 years old. And when I get on the plane, you know, I don't have ice bags on my back and I don't have ice packs on my shoulders. And I see other guys that way. And I just, I don't want to be that, you know? So yeah. you just stay fit, you just do it a lifestyle I mean, I've, been, my, I've been that way my whole life you know it's, it's not something i just do great advice though for any anybody young and up and coming in the in the film industry make sure you stay fit and uh so that you can keep moving because that's really important so obviously you know we're about balance and so there's we've talked a lot, quite a bit about the ravens but you're you're shooting other things so how do you how do you balance like when you're in kind of the uh, an agency or production, uh, having a production company, like how do you balance having, you know, big, big clients, blue chip clients versus kind of small things or how, what, like, is there an ideal cost client profile that you have or how, what's your, what, what has been your approach uh, for our listeners out there that are, are thinking about how do they balance their portfolio of who do they shoot for? Yeah, well, it's not easy. Um, you know, it's really hard. It's something we we work on all the time. Um, but uh, you know, follow a calendar religiously. I have great staff. You know, we scale up uh, with you know a great bunch of freelancers that we've developed over the years. Um, I probably have at least thirty different people that I can call on a regular basis, whether they're grips, electrics, you know, graphic artists, you know, editors, sound guys. Um, we scale up and we scale down. Our clients are, are phenomenal. They, they, they trust us. Um, I think it's all about communication. Um, and that, but that takes time. Um, so, you know, when, when freedom, when I was younger, you know, I definitely, uh, missed a lot of, you know, some stuff that I wish I hadn't, but you, you know, your family gets used to it also. You know, I mean, it, it you know, they, they, the, uh, not that you abuse it, but I mean, they, they know what you are, that my kids know that I love what I do. And they like what I do, and it's it's kind of cool, and uh, and they just kind of get used to it. But uh, I don't know if that answers your question. Um, and I have great staff. I mean, Jordan and John and, and well, Nick Nick you know, is now the owner. Those guys were amazing. I mean, they were just able to juggle a lot of things all the time. Again, the technology changes. You know, we all have computers and offices at home and we all are able to do everything you know, everyone can multitask now where back in the day you know you handled one or two things i i think honestly when i came into to, at spicer productions i was that guy i was the new guy jeff can do this he can do that he can do this and i've always surrounded myself with people who are like that i don't want to go out on a union job where everybody has just that role and i and i've hired people that way and we talk about that when i hire them it's like what do you want to do do you want to be just this or you want to be a piece of something where you have an influence on how the day even unfolds and how the week unfolds and how your own clients unfold um so i've just surrounded myself with people like that and that's certainly what nick and jordan and john are and all the freelancers that i use i don't i, I use an example uh, it's a it's a horrible example but you know there's audio guys that they just come on set and they do audio. They do mm -hmm. nothing else. I will not hire those guys. <laughs> I'll hire that audio guy who'll come out and do a little grip work, you know, help pack the van at the end of the day. You know, if there's trash on the ground that we've left from craft service, you know, it would, you know, exaggerate, but you know, we all just pitch in and do it. And uh and occasionally you need to go out of that outside of that. But for the most part, I stick to that. And uh it has been a win-win all along. 
Yeah, that's really good. I, I, I think of two things. One, when I got my first job when I was, I was either 19 or 20. I was really young coming into like the digital world and I went to school for 3d animation. My, my goal was to like work at Pixar and I was like this close to like saying, I'm going to, I'm going to submit everything. I'm going to work on toy story. And then I like the web was just happening in the late nineties and the dot com boom happened. And I was like, well, see you later. 3d animation. I'm doing websites, dot coms. But anyways, the advice I got from one of my professors was he was actually, um, direct, he was a professor. I, I took, um, photography and he's like, take whatever job you can get as an intern. Like if it's emptying the trash and I, I did, that's what I, I, I took a job resizing images, like co photo correcting in like Photoshop 4.0, like when it's, and resizing images, silhouetting things, like doing like a thousand images a day and they saw I was like working hard and they're like, thanks for going to run and get copy paper and emptying the trash. And they recognized that and that leveled me up. And I tried to, my second point was I was teaching my son this too. Like I, I took him out on a shoot cause he showed an interest in photography. He actually just participated in this program called what's so cool about manufacturing. It's a statewide thing in Pennsylvania. He actually yesterday, went to states for it. it's a it's a production where these companies partner up with a local school middle schools and they tell their story and these students sh they they script it they shoot it they edit it they produce a two-minute video and it's into a competition and he went to the state level and he showed this interest in photography i said you come out to a shoot once and you're gonna help pack pack the van up and unpack it and if somebody needs something, you're running to get a battery or water or whatever. It's like, at the end of the day, he goes, dad, I'm exhausted. <laughs> so yeah. that's really great advice. You know, like if, if you're in, just get it, get, um, get the experience and just watch what's going on. Right. Like the logistics, I can, you know, I, I've, I've only been on, you know, a handful of you, this has been your whole career. So it's like, just watch what's going on too. And, um, is there... Is there like um, other like resources that you can point people to that, or like other things that come to mind that somebody's kind of trying to figure out which direction to go? Like, is there anything that you can point people to? Well, I mean, there's so much stuff content-wise out on the internet right now. I mean, I, I, Adobe themselves has tons of learning stuff on there. Um, I, I think talking to a professional and you know, working your way that angle. I think the human element is is the best way first uh, to kind of narrow it down a little bit because it's, it's, it, I think it, it could be mind-boggling. You need to focus on something. Um, I tend to get a lot of calls, first-time calls from people, and then I never hear from them again. You know, mm. you need to follow up. <laughs> yeah, that would probably be the biggest advice I could give anybody. And then once you show up, do everything. Um, like, like you said, you know, to your son. I mean, literally just do do whatever it can you can to help um it, it will get noticed um but I, I think a lot of people are afraid to do that i ask people to do all kinds of stuff for me because i wouldn't hesitate to do it if somebody asked me to do it you know I, you know the other day i asked somebody can you just bring my mail in you know if you're gonna get that at the office can you bring my mail in i was like wow that was kind of weird but you know, i would do that you know i wouldn't even think twice about it and that's just kind of who i am uh, and that's who i surround myself with you know, um, as far as resources, though, yeah, I mean, there's all kinds of stuff on the web. There's all kinds of stuff on YouTube. There's all kinds of, I mean, there's so many explainer videos out there. Yeah. But I really do think trying to navigate to a person who can guide you a little bit and then follow up and stay and stay engaged. I can't tell you how many first time calls I've gotten from family, friends or, you know, friends of friends and professional friends and it just they never call back it's like all right well either i'm not doing a great job or that's just how people interact you know but it's like it's like securing a new client if someone tells you to call them in, in a month call them call them the next month and call them the next month and don't stop you know and i think people just give up too easily in general yeah great great words of advice don't give up keep following keep keep the communication flowing make sure that you're following up uh, uh, and showing interest, showing caring that, I mean, that's what I use in my business is like, 
because like when you're selling or you know pitching right it's it could come off very one-sided sleazy or whatever you want to call it and i think it's really important that you go down a path of showing you know that you're a human too and showing the the caring side of it so you mentioned something before i want to i want to boomerang back to swing swing back to you you mentioned that so you've transitioned the business now so after being in the business for so long, you've 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 kind of stepped down and you're, you're entering a different phase here. You know, talk about that process a little bit. Maybe how you came about of deciding, hey, it's time for me to kind of step back and 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 let somebody else take over at Freedom Digital. Can you can you what can you share about that? Yeah, sure. Um, so you know, I've my entire life I've been pretty uh, shielded from any personal tragedy or anything like that. I mean, my mom passed of, uh, during COVID of, of dementia and, you know, in an old age and my wife went through cancer, uh, uh, and she's great, you know, caught her, thankfully caught her early. It just really made me step back. I do work. I work all the time, I, but I love what I do. You know what I mean? And I don't even think of it as work, you know? Um, and it just really made me kind of step back a little bit. Um, and I work with this gentleman, you know, Nick Spire, who, uh, I cannot sit here and, and even begin to say enough wonderful things about this guy that, that are all earned. Uh, so when I hired Nick 15 years ago, he had sent his resume out to like 50 people. I think I was the only one who responded back to me. His reel was great. He came out of a uh, great school up in New York. And, um, and uh, I said, wow, if this guy can do that, that's not what I'm doing now, but if he can do that, he can do anything I'm doing, or he certainly has shown me that he has the capacity to learn. So, and when I hired Nick, um, I told him, I said, look, you know, at my first job or my second job at Big Shot, I was kind of promised, you know, ownership uh, at one point while I was, it never came to fruition. I said, Nick, hang with me and I'll, I'll, you know, I'll try to make it worth a while. And he's earned it. So, you know, I'm getting pushing almost 60. Um, and it just, it was time, you know, it was just time. COVID came and I just, I didn't want to pull the train anymore. I wanted to start just coming back to being more of what I do, a technician and, and, and an image maker and, and use those skills. And uh, it's worked out great, man. Nick, so Nick bought the company in January. Um, it's been a you know peaceful transition of power. Um, he's a great guy. He's going to, he's going to do amazing stuff. Um, and he's kind of carrying it on in the same vein that I have, you know, where we didn't lay anybody off. Um, he's using the same account and you know, all that kind of stuff. So it, it was really, it was really, pretty easy and organic. All my clients know them. They all love them. Um, it's been great. It, it's been good. It's only been a couple of months, um, but business is good. Um, and, uh, you know, he's going to add some new perspective to things or maybe I just didn't, um, have as much, uh, input on things, you know, and he, he, and he will. So I'm, I'm really excited for him and I'm excited for myself. I'm excited to do some other things. So, so, so what am I doing? So I'm going out trying to find some cool stuff again that sometimes maybe freedom doesn't get considered for. And I would bring it right back to Nick. You know, he's my best friend. Uh, he's the best technician I've ever worked with. And I'm just gonna bring it back to him uh, if I can get it, you know? So I'm, I'm looking forward to that. Well, congratulations. I mean, it, it definitely goes with that. What is that saying, right? Like if you if you love what you do, you'll never work a day in your life. And it sounds like that's, that's what you're doing. And I think it, it, it does sound like a great win-win uh, that you're able to do that. So that's, that's really exciting that you found somebody that you could, you know, partner up within and, you know, it allows you to be more creative or have more flexibility and you're still a part of it. So that's, that's, that's really neat. Um, I hope to get there hope to get there someday. Nick, he's going to do great. Um, I'm excited for him. I mean, I, I, I've never seen a young man with so much composure and confidence, um, and patience. Um, in 15 years with me, I've never seen a guy ever get upset, lose his temper, you know, or just, you know, look overwhelmed. <laughs> it just didn't happen. So, um, yeah, my clients are going to, are going to do well by Nick. So we talk about balance a lot here. So as you're transitioning, how are you finding some balance is, is, um, you know, I, I, it's something that I still work work on every single day. Is how do you balance, you know, work life? Or talk to me about what does balance even mean mean to you? Let's start there. Yeah. Um, wow. What does balance mean to me? Um, you know, I so you know, in modern technology, you're never unplugged. 
And I got to the point where, and I let it happen myself. Um, and Nick has already recognized he doesn't want to work like I did. Like I never, there were no boundaries. You know, you could talk to me any time of day, weekend, whatever. I always made myself accessible, but I got to where I was because I was that guy and I never really turned it off. So, and I think, and I definitely could have. Um, um, so I think bound, you know, balance for me is, is not having to do that anymore. And it's, it's, um, the first couple of months were hard I and mean, I'm slowly weeding myself, but you know, I, I want to support Nick too. So like, I still check, my, I still check my emails the second I wake up, you know, we have international clients, so I want to be, I want to help him. Like if he misses something, I want to be there for him, but I, I, I don't, I'm not pulling the train. So I, you know there's balance there already. I'm not, I'm not having to do the invoicing. I'm not having to do in the billing. Um, so yeah, I'm just not responsible for like, like, you know, I, I really felt like everything funneled to the top and now I'm not that guy, but I'm like the best support guy, <laughs> you know, I know what it takes and, uh, and I'm looking out and, um, and, but we're all that way. Like our whole company's that way. So we're all looking out for each other and it's, it's pretty cool. So, so balance for me, one is that, and then I, I, I'm just trying to do, um, you know, I've taken a couple of trips and I've, you know, heading down to the beach a little bit more and just trying to get on my bike a little bit more and, you know, those things. But those are like things I've always done. You know, I just do more now. Well, that's it. Maybe that's the balance, yeah. right? We always talk about balance yeah. as a scale. Like when one side tips to the other, you feel unbalanced. If, if I'm doing more work and less personal, then I feel unbalanced. So I want to do more of the other one to be that way. But then... Yeah you know, maybe it sounds like you're wired in a way where you, you always got it. Do you work? Maybe you just don't have to work. You, you'll work every day, but maybe you don't work full days. Yeah, exactly. And I, yeah, that's absolutely it. I definitely can put my phone away now and not feel guilty about it. And I, and I do, I mean, I'm getting used to it. I'm, I'm doing it more and more. Um, but I think I am the guy who always needs something going on. And, um, I'm not going to make apologies for that. <laughs> yeah. I can't sit still either. I'm always doing something. <laughs> yeah. Like... Right. I mean, yeah. Life is short and, uh, take it by the reins and get after it, you know? Yeah, definitely. Interesting stuff. Well, I want to drop, um, where, if, if someone wants to learn more about you personally or freedom digital, how can they get in touch? Well, our website is, you know, freedomdigital.net. Um, you know, the Baltimore Ravens.com. We have, there's tons of content there. Um, you know, anything with the Ravens productions, you know, um, I'm, I'm not on everything. I can't sit here and tell you everything out there is mine. I mean, they have a huge staff. I'm a small part of it. Um, but any of the game day pieces and stuff like that are cool. You know, uh, Freedom's got a lot of stuff out on Vimeo and stuff like that. And uh, Instagram, FDM ink jeff or something like that on instagram i try to put out a picture once a week or something just again that but that's like my personal stuff it's it's my hobby it's not my job so i, just I love it stuff. i'll make sure i link up all of jeff's um links on agencybalance.com so you can connect and, and consume some of his content i know i'm going to be circling back to some of that because i i didn't know you had an instagram i want to check that out <laughs> do you do you um so you talk about taking more trips like do you always have the like through the lens, no matter where you're looking, like you're framing up things or, Oh, that would be cool to shoot it there. Or is it like, is it like, that's the last thing I want to be doing, Dave? No, I, it's funny. I can't look at anything without looking at it through a lens. It's sad, but that's just the way it is. Everywhere I go, it's like, wow, that would be cool. Or I'm always looking for something. I'll take, I like to take walks by myself, which is my camera and just go out. I'm always looking through the lens. I just, I see life through a lens. I, I put the blinders on and focus in on what's important. And that's just kind of how my life is. It's weird. I, I can't, I can't even explain it, but it's definitely me. And uh, so, yeah, I'm always thinking that way. Always. It's not weird. It's totally not weird. I used to, there was a, a good phase. It was probably early in my career. I was really into like, like typography I, like as I got like transitioned into digital, I was really into typography and I would watch film and I would like critique the the opening and the ending like typography use and be like, I can't believe they used that font. Like that's so unreadable. <laughs> or like I just counted nine fonts, like stop it. And my my wife was always like poking me like, what is wrong with you? Like just watch the movie. I'm like, 
it's a film it's not a movie <laughs> 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 you, so you should check out the so netflix has a um, series called abstract have you seen that at all i have not i'm gonna jot that down oh check it out all right so there's a resource for people it, you know it's high end and it, you know, it's super well produced but they're actually uh talk to the gentleman uh i'm gonna botch it but there's a there's a thing on typography okay it's a fascinating i i, I watched it. I, I was like what is this and it was amazing yeah, abstract on Netflix is a great industry. Um, talks to the guy, the guy who designed Instagram. It talks about um, uh, another guy is the guy who uh, started Nike shoes. Not started Nike shoes, but helped design an air. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah, I actually, I, I think I did see parts of that. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, good stuff. Yeah, so the other thing out, you're so you're 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 out there walking by yourself with a camera, what, what do you shoot with? Can you share like what, what kind of oh, yeah. camera you use and all that? Yeah. Yeah. I'm shooting on a Nikon D850. Um, it's like a 42 megapixel camera, which gives you the ability to blow up incredibly. So I shoot like a lot of high speed, like, like lately what I've been doing, like my things to shoot waves as they're breaking at the beach. And then really like, like literally just hit that little break and i print i'm doing some big prints uh down at my beach house and uh got some stuff here i just i don't know i, I shoot you know we have uh today i'm shooting with a, a nikon i mean a sony fx3 on a ronin rs2 um we're all sony in-house um the yep. ravens are all uh area mirrors which is the Rolls royce of camera um so yeah, I, I'm pretty much a D850 guy though. And uh, I'm all Nikon. I've been Nikon my entire life, but I know, you know, Canon's phenomenal also. And I'm really looking at the Sony, the new Sony stuff is just, it's pretty fascinating. It's, it's just incredible how fast it's gotten and grainless it's gotten. And, but you know, they all, they all catch up to each other. So it's whatever suck yeah. you're on. But yeah, I'm a Nikon guy, Nikon and Sony. Yep, same here. I started out Nikon using using Nikon in school. E even before that, I was using it when I took film uh, or photography. It was it was Hasselblad. I was shooting on, looking down into a Hasselblad, and I, I had a, I had to uh, produce and, and create poor. my own I chromes. Too, I was too poor for that, Dave. I couldn't afford a Hasselblad. <laughs> uh, well, well, that was the thing too. It's funny you mention that because my teacher was like, "All right." you only have so much in your kit of, of Chrome and you got to pick your shots. You know, it's not just blasting through digital. Like it was back then you would be like this cost, like your, you, whatever hundred bucks that you spent on, on the Chrome. I had to plan out my 12 shots and I had to really make sure like I took, um, still life was like the first thing, like you had to like set up the product shot and stuff. And I'm like shooting down in this. And I like that because I like the lighting aspect of it. I liked, you know, playing with metals and how light would bounce and bend. And I apologize. I didn't, it's too beautiful of a day. I left my window open and my, the, the left side of my face is getting a little blown out. If you're seeing me, <laughs> Jeff's critiquing me. Um, but I usually try to, when I'm on camera, no matter what, I try to, I care about lighting. Lighting's, lighting's hard and a lot of people overlook lighting, but that's the most important thing. Yeah. It really, it's not, actually, it's not the most, but it's very important. Right. Right. And that's really just changed a lot in the last couple of years. Yeah, the LED stuff is fascinating too. I mean, that, you know, lighter, faster, more powerful. I mean, it's just incredible what you can do now. Now we're going out with battery. You take a, a small generator out and you plug, you know, LED lights into a generator versus a big truck, you know, generator, you know, diesel, whatever, all that stuff that came with it. It, it, that aspect's been very cool. I kind of missed that earlier. Um, that's been very, very cool. Yeah. yeah, good stuff. Well, I think we could talk about lighting and camera equipment and the Ravens and all this all day long, but I, I do want to kind of end and thank you so much for, for coming on and sharing some of your, your wisdom and congratulations on your journey. Um, I will be sure to drop as many links so you can kind of consume Jeff's content and I just wanted to thank you again for, for coming on Agency Balance today. Oh, I appreciate it. And uh, hopefully somebody gets a nugget out of there for something. Yeah, something in the future. I appreciate it. Subscribe to the podcast at agencybalance.com, Apple, YouTube, or Spotify.